Hello everyone, Daniel Yuck here. Thank you all for tuning in today. I appreciate you. Today I'm going to share with you all the approach that I take to autoclave the grips on my pen style tattoo machines. However, I just wanted to make apparent that this approach could be really applied to anything that needs to be autoclave and that can be autoclaved. I will leave links in the description below to everything that you see here in this video. However, should you have any questions at all at any point throughout this video, I highly encourage you to drop a comment below. I'm going to do my absolute best to assist you in the best possible direction. With that being said, let's go ahead and dive straight on into this. Okay, so where I begin is I have a good surface, such as a concrete hard surface, and I'm going to place a piece of Teflon material here, as you see right here. I will leave links again in the description below for you. And this is a high heat resistance material. And I'm also going to get a heat pad, as you see right here, that I have. And this is a very big heat pad. It's 15 by 15, and it's thick, as you can see as well. And I'm going to be placing that on the Teflon like so. So after that, I'm going to get another piece of Teflon here and I'm going to place that over the top so that way we have a kind of a heat resistance sandwich here, so to speak. So we have a piece of Teflon, the heat pad, and then another piece of Teflon is what we are working with. After that, I'm ready to place my unit that will be conducting heat on top right here. And that's going to be this autoclave right here. So for those who aren't familiar, this is one form of an autoclave. They have different models, different makes. And this is a more in-house model right here. So this is what I'm going to be utilizing to sterilize my grips. And for those who aren't familiar, in a nutshell, it basically uses steam and pressure to sterilize the tattoo equipment that I'm utilizing on my end. Now, with that being said, from this point forward, we can go ahead and proceed to plug in the unit and bag up everything so that way we can put it inside. And I'm just gonna explain as best as I can here, step by step, on what I'm doing. So should you have any questions at all, please, again, drop a comment below. I'm gonna do my best to assist you in the best possible direction. Okay, so before we get into the process here, one thing I wanna point out is upon sterilization, you don't wanna put any electrical components such as a machine like this. You don't wanna put any coils or anything like that into the autoclave. What goes into the autoclave are components that can be autoclaved, and they're typically made of aluminum, as you see right here. So you also would not want to put this just in there like so. That is not what we want to do. What you're going to want to use is a sterilization pouch like this. And what this allows us to do is this allows us to bag our gear prior to sterilization in one of these right here. And as you see, you have a couple of options of EO gas and then you have steam right here. So as you see, it does start off as like a light blue color. By the end of this, this color should change if I am correct indicating that it did go through a sterilization process. Now, upon putting your gear in there, again, put the components that you can put in there, such as this metal part. And this is again, a grip from Ink Claw. Then you're just simply gonna wanna place them into a bag like so. And allow me to take the grip off right here. Simply remove this grip. This right here, this grip tip can be autoclaved. Then you want to do the same thing. Bag your gear like so. And you don't ever really want to congest these bags. You don't want to put too much in there. And you want to have the right sizes for what you need. So let's say, for example, I haven't used this machine yet. So let's say, for example, I take this out. This was that bar. This is a setup that needs to be sterilized. That's what we're going to use. Remove this strip and then we close it out. Me personally, I could probably put one more in there, but I don't want to push it as I want the steam to penetrate and get everything so that way I can ensure a better sterilization process. So I'm going to, for demonstration, we're going to use our imagination. This is one of the setups that we need to sterilize. And then you'd simply open up the bag here. Or I'm sorry, take off that tab there. And then you close it like so. So now this is ready to be put into the autoclave. And then we're gonna repeat this process with whatever we needed to be autoclaved. And in this instance, I have a tray right here of a few different types of grips that I use. So I have a grip for the CNC WE Plus right here. I have a grip for the CNC Q1, the CNC Q2, and the Ink Claw Dagger. And again, you can do an assortment of different grips here. 
So you want to bag everything prior to even putting it into the autoclave. And um, before I bag it, what I like to do is I like to get opticide wipes and really wipe everything down well, making sure that I'm getting that solution to every single crevice and for the kill time, which is a minute. And then after that, I spray it down with alcohol and then I wipe it all down as well. And then from there, I go ahead and put it into the pouches. That's just how I clean everything prior to actually putting it into the bags. I don't just simply unscrew it and put it in here. I unscrew it and I take it through like a wash, which means I wipe it, clean it down, etc., etc. So these have already been through that process of wiping down. I mean, it's a very straightforward process and you just wanna ensure that the solution gets in all the crevices. And I'm gonna repeat this bagging process, as you can see, until I am done. And you also wanna have some sort of stainless steel tray around or some sort of tray to put things on and off of that's also sterilized in between and after sessions. So once I am done and these are sterilizing, I'm going to wipe this down again with opticides, making sure I'm wiping down everything as I'm going. And I'm going to get another pouch and then we're just going to keep bagging these until we are done here. And the reason why, if those were, uh, if you were asking why I wipe down with alcohol after the opticide wipes is because if you leave a solution on there, chances of it damaging the grip are greater. So therefore I use a solution to kill anything that's on there. And then I use another solution to remove that solution. And then I just, you know, rinse it all off and then sterilize. So it is a bit of a lengthy process. However, it's a very important process as it is a matter of life or death. As you see there. Make sure that you're using gloves throughout this entire process. It doesn't make sense to sterilize without gloves. It just defeats the purpose. And then you're gonna do the same thing with everything. Again, that can be autoclave. Not everything could be autoclave. So whenever you get a machine, just make sure that the components or what components that you need to be autoclave can be before getting it. So here we have a beautiful tray of grips that is now ready to be autoclave. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the angle out and I'm going to show you all a top view here and how we're going to set this up and utilize this and then we will come back and continue throughout the entire process here. So here we are in the top view of the autoclave and again we are using pressure and steam to sterilize our gear here. I'm going to place another sheet of Teflon over here because we're always gonna to wanna to assume everything's hot. We have to be very, very careful and have the right gear upon conducting ourselves here. So this gets very, very hot upon heating it up. It's not hot right now as we haven't used it. I'm gonna show you the inside. This right here is where our gear is going to go into. And down here in this reservoir right here, we're going to pour water. Now, another thing that I wanna to touch base on is the water that we pour into there is super important. You wanna make sure that it's going to be distilled water and you wanna make sure that you have an adequate amount and you also wanna make sure that we're covering this ring right here. So I'm gonna pour some water in there. And again, you wanna make sure that it's distilled. The minerals from other waters will corrode the hot and everything over time. So I wanna make sure that I have an adequate amount because I am going to leave these in there for about 25 minutes, 30. That's a recommended time. So I'm just gonna pour everything. We're gonna pour the entire, that wasn't a full gallon as I used a little bit from a last session. So that was about maybe 3.6 liters, maybe give or take. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to place this over. And for those who are wanting to know more about this autoclave, I will do an in-depth review on it as well for those who are curious. So for this, I'm just showing you all the process that I take to autoclave the gear. So we are now ready to place our gear that needs to be sterilized into the autoclave. And this is another important variable that I also wanted to touch base on. Now, we're going to use theory here. We're going to be using steam to sterilize our gear. In theory, if we have the pouches like that face up, the steam is going to collect on the underside of the plastic, which is what we don't want. We want to stay away from 
any steam or any water or any moisture collecting on the inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it upside down with the paper side up for most effectiveness. So that way when it's done, it dries a lot faster as well. We want them to dry as quickly as possible, which is also why these trays come in handy. We'll get to that here shortly. You also want to place them down in a manner where they don't overlap each other. You don't want to just start doing that. That's not appropriate. And sometimes you can get more than others. This is, I think, an 8.5 liter. So it's not too, too big. It's not that small either. And this right here, this may be overload. So something like this, I'm not sure if this would be fully acceptable if I want that because I would like the steam to evenly go throughout, you know, each and every pouch. So what I can do is I can simply remove one and then we can get that one on the next batch and kind of know your limits. So for this comfortably, I want to do four at a time, as you see right here. And just make sure that everything is as best as it can be. You don't want anything overlapping each other, anything like that. So once we figure out the appropriate settings and we feel all is good, I feel it's gonna get an even amount of steam throughout and pressure throughout the process here. We're now essentially ready to put the hood back on and tighten everything up here. And again, I'm going to change the angle here and I'm going to show you the pressure gauge up close so that we have a good idea as to what's going on. By the end of this video, you should understand how these work. I'm going to put the clamps on like so. Before I actually um, screw them in, tighten them in, I just go ahead and do it like so. Make sure I clamp it on. And then I start doing it diagonally. So I'll tighten this one, tighten this one, tighten this one. And then I'm gonna tighten this one. Oh, I'm sorry, it'll be this one. And then this one, you get my drift and you want to repeat that process until this is fully tight. And the autoclave also comes with a bar right here that you utilize to tighten when you can't tighten by hand anymore. So that way we're ensuring that the pressure doesn't pop off the top here. You're going to see how much pressure this thing actually puts out here. I'm going to want to close this valve as well. I'm going to tighten everything by hand. I'll tighten the rest of the way with the bar. And you really want to take your time with this process. Don't rush. Make sure that everything is tight because you really don't want to have any accidents with one of these. So before we continue here, let's just do a quick recap. We have the foundation set with a heat resistant sandwich, two Teflon pieces and a heat resistant pad right here, as you saw earlier in the video. We put an adequate amount of water that was covering over the heat ring there, the coil inside. We had the container that lives inside of the autoclave in which we put our gear into. We house our gear in the sterilization pouches, which are now in here. And we have now screwed the entire unit on and these are now locked and loaded ready to go we have not plugged in the unit into any power yet this could have actually waited but i decided to just do that earlier on in the video now we are ready to plug in the unit and begin the full sterilization process it's super important that we don't plug it in until we are ready and done and everything is set up ready to go that is crucial and it is just important that we follow those simple instructions just to avoid any issues that could potentially arise so now let's go ahead and plug the unit in. So the unit is now connected to power and we can hear the water start trickling a little bit. So that's an indication that it's working, that it's heating up. I like to wait and sit around and babysit the machine and allow it to really 
um, I monitor it until the process is done. I don't leave until I know that the sterilization process is complete and going smoothly. Uh, should anything happen during the process, I'm here to monitor and pull the plug on it and cut the process short. Now you're going to see why you need to monitor this here shortly. With that being said though, I'm allowing this to heat up. It's going to take about maybe a few moments. I don't know exact time frames, but it's going to start heating up. And then from when I hear the water actually coming to a good, a good boil is when I more or less begin the sterilization process. It's going to start rising in temperature and that's when the water is actually working. So essentially when everything is working is when for me, the sterilization process begins. Okay, so if we listen closely, we can hear the water starting to move and heat up and the coil is doing its thing. The unit is starting to do its thing. From when I see the unit in actual a full effect is when I like to begin the actual sterilization timer. Because if I were to begin the timer right now, let's say if it took 15 minutes for it to heat up, that's 15 minutes that go unaccounted for during the sterilization process that weren't technically sterilizing because the temperatures weren't there, the steam or pressure wasn't there as well. So there's many variables to consider. In a moment here, we are going to come back when this is in full effect and I'm going to begin the timer at that point. For me, I like to let my gear sterilize for about 25 to 30 minutes is the recommended time. So I'm gonna stick with that. Um, uh, I don't recommend doing it for an hour or anything like that. So I'm gonna do about 25, 30 minutes you can hear it if you listen closely, starting to do its thing. And I'm gonna show you every step of the way throughout the process of this autoclave right here. So I'm just gonna kind of let the camera run real time and then we'll just edit through the video here. Okay, so when I start seeing the gauge move a bit, and that means the pressure is building up. What I like to do or what's recommended is to let the cold air or the cold steam that was there from before completely out like so and then allow the steam to build up again. So that's how I approach it. That's what I'm going to do. And literally, literally from here on out, it's just waiting it out, babysitting it and monitoring the entire process, ensuring that it's doing the trick. Once we start seeing the temperature and pressure rise is when we can begin the sterilization timer. So we can see the pressure gauge is now moving on up. The temperatures are climbing. It's starting to, it's starting to move. We're moving in the right direction. I still wouldn't consider this adequate enough to consider sterilization yet. So we have to wait it out a bit longer. So we are now coming up to the temperatures and pressures where I could begin to start the timer here for the sterilization process. As you see, the gauge is showing the reading right there. And I think I'm going to hit the timer here shortly in about a minute or so. And then from there, I'm going to leave this on for about 25 to 30 minutes. So that way we can effectively do what we need to do. So we're reaching the desired temperatures and readings right here. I'm now going to hit the timer. So I can't leave it in the frame because I don't want to have a phone around a heat source this hot. So I'll come back from time to time and I'll just put it in the frame here. Once it reaches the desired temperatures and pressures, we're going to see the valve over here off to the right start pushing the steam out. And I believe this is the first of those motions. You can hear the unit working. So we're only a minute and 34 seconds into the sterilization process. And that's the pressure valve releasing pressure. And you're gonna see it's going to do that uh, throughout the process here to keep the pressure at a steady pressure. And uh, the temperature is going to stay at that consistent temperature as well. And the time, again, that 25, 30 minute kill time is going to be everything as well. So when we combine these elements, we combine the heat, when we combine the steam combined with the pressure and time, we get an adequate, you know, a good effective sterilization process.
You can see the pressure is collecting. It's releasing the pressure like so. The pressure again be begins to build up and collect. This is going to repeat the process over and over and over for our desired time frame. Essentially, when we are done, when we reach that 30 minute mark, we can simply go ahead and unplug the unit. 25, 30 minute mark, we can unplug the unit and proceed accordingly. Pay attention to the pressure gauge. It's going up and then it goes down when steam is released right there through the safety valve. As you see, pressure is building, pressure is building. We are now about four minutes and 25 seconds into the sterilization process. And that's why it's important to begin when the machine is in full effect. It took about eight or nine minutes, give or take, for the machine to fully heat up and be fully active. Let's go ahead and switch over to a time lapse and then we'll be back when the sterilization process finishes. We're approaching the halfway mark or about to and it's just going to continue this process again until our desired time frame. Now, just to reiterate here, there's a gauge right here that I'm watching. If this right here goes above a certain area that makes me feel uncomfortable, I'm going to pull that safety valve up and I'm going to pull the plug out. I'm going to cut the power to it. So I just wanted to reiterate, that's what you would do if these, you know, get out of whack and it's not at a steady temperature like it is right now. If it goes too, too high, pull the safety valve, pull the electricity and let it go down to zero, let it cool down. But this is completely normal what's happening right here. seconds away from the halfway mark and this is essentially what the process consists of on my end this is how I go about sterilizing the gear Okay, so we're about a minute and a half away from sterilization now, as you see. And we are about to pull the plug here shortly, as I want to finish the cycle here in about a minute. This right here was just a constant cycle of up and down, up and down. I made sure that this didn't go past a certain point. So I think now it's a safe point to pull the plug. You can leave it longer for the 30 should you choose to do so. For this demonstration, we'll go ahead and do the 25.
Okay, so now we cut power to the unit. What we want to do is we want to hit this deflate valve, but we want to be super careful upon doing that. You want to have some heat resistant gloves, something to protect yourself, and you want to pull this, and you want to be careful because it's going to get steamy. So it's still releasing its pressure and we're still at about 26 minutes give or take. So we are in the recommended field. And as you can see, that was very, very loud. And what I like to do is I like to simply leave it for a little bit longer. I don't touch it right away. I leave it for about maybe three to four minutes just to allow the top rim to cool a bit down as much as I can. Right here, I have another piece of Teflon. So when I do place the top of the unit down, right here on top, it's not burning up my counters or whatever is there. It's heat resistant. So from here, what I'm going to begin is I'm going to want to remove all of these screws around the same way that we put them on in diagonal and be very careful because everything's hot. Okay, so once we have all of these open so that we can just loosen them by hand, do so. And it's super important that we take our time with this. I know some may want to rush, but this is a matter of life or death with the client and yourself. This thing is not a toy. It can go bad if we aren't doing things correctly, if we overlook something, all of the above. So upon removing that, I'm going to remove the top part of the unit there and put it on the Teflon. And what I'm going to do now is you want to glove up and make sure that you have sterile gloves on because it defeats the purpose of what we just did here. So if you look close, there's still steam coming out of the unit. I'm going to grab my stainless steel tray right here and I'm going to carefully get out the grips or everything that we sterilized and place it in the sterilization area. Now you want to be careful with this process because the grips and everything are going to be super hot. They're going to be very, very hot as they were in the autoclave. And this is what we are left with. Allow me to let these air dry for a little bit and then we're gonna come back and take a close look at them. One thing I wanna show you all is typically when there are you know contaminations after sterilization is because you see how we have moisture still locked in these packets. 
Well, it's because the units themselves are still very, very warm. Next to hot, rather, if I leave my finger on some of them a little bit too long, it's still warm. So as they cool down, the moisture will dissipate as well. I use this stainless steel tray to um, take, you know, speed that process up. So that way we can cool these down and dry them in a timely manner. So that's the idea. You don't really want to put like a dirty fan on them to blow on them. However, you do want to have a nice clean room with good airflow. On top of that, you know, put them on something like this. So that way the stainless steel tray is naturally cool and it can help cool them down much quickly, minimizing any potential risk or contaminations that can occur after the sterilization process. Another thing that I like to do to kind of speed up the process is, let's say how we have, again, moisture buildup right there, and this is the CNC Q1 grip. I like to grab it and turn it upside down and kind of just shake it back and forth. I don't have like a drying unit or anything like that. So I think just kind of moving them back and forth to help rush the uh, drying process. I don't see how that can be wrong. And as you see right there in that package, there's a lot less moisture now. So by doing this, taking care of the moisture, you know, within minutes from when they get out is to me the way to go. As you can see, the moisture is dissipating on there and they are cooling down as well. This is the ink clawed dagger grip or one of the dagger grips. And again, I'm just gonna, you know, move it around. This paper dries really, really fast to meant to do so, or this material, whatever this is right here, it does dry really, really fast. And you can see though, all the moisture, the condensation, everything that's in there begins to dissipate. You can even move the unit around. Proceed to just dry it like so and again. Um, this is a more manual approach, maybe even dinosaur age, but however, still effective. We're still doing it correctly and we get to where we're going. And then the same thing with that, just repeat the process until you're done. I like to put the paper up because the paper can breathe more when it's on the top like this. As you can see, here's the ink claw Phoenix. And another thing that I want to point out is that's how I'm going to go about that. And as you see, they're really almost just about dry. That's really nice. As they're cooling down, the units themselves, as they cool down, the moisture should go away. If the moisture doesn't go away by the time the unit is cooled down or within that time frame, give or take a few minutes or so, then we may run into some issues. However, I want to point out, if we take a look at this package right here, this didn't go into the autoclave, if we remember from earlier in the video, and you can see that it's a light blue. We did chose to go with the steam sterilization approach for this, in which we can see right here, it changes to this color. And it's like that throughout all of them, as you see. Again, because we chose the steam sterilization approach, so right there is an indicator that it was taken or that these units were taken through that process. The color should change from this to this. And every single um, sterilization pouch or packaging has different colors. For this one, as you can see, it changes from a light blue to this green right here or that really, really dark green. Doesn't matter. It still indicates that it went through the steam process here. In a nutshell, though, that's pretty much how I go about steriliz uh, sterilizing. I do this before a session. So let's say when the client books, I know that I'm going to have the session there. I'll go ahead and set up my session and then I'll make sure that these are cooking in the background, autoclaving, sterilizing in the background while I am setting up so that I can monitor and set up at the same time. So that is what I do to sterilize my tattoo equipment. Just to recap before we check out here, I start with disassembling after the tattoo session. I wipe down everything that I can possibly wipe down on the gear and machines themselves with opticide or cavicide wipes. From that point forward, I go ahead and I remove the chemicals that I put onto the gear with distilled water and alcohol as I don't want it to impact negatively upon putting them into the autoclave. After that, what I go ahead and do is I put them into these sterilization pouches and then from that point forward, I neatly organize them into the autoclave and leave them in there for 25 to 30 minutes. After that, I glove up, make sure everything is brand new, put it on a clean stainless steel tray and continue the day. The process 
is very, very straightforward. If I didn't touch base on anything specific that you may have wanted to know at any point throughout this video, I highly encourage you to please drop a comment below. I'm going to do my absolute best to assist you in the best possible direction. I also have social medias all under the same name as my YouTube channel at Daniel Yuck. I have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok all under Daniel Yuck, D-A-N-I-E-L-Y-U-C-K. I I would truly appreciate the support on there. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for me and ring that bell as I'm going to be bringing more videos like this. Thank you for tuning in yet again. You all have a great day.